she wants to start. Can we have the projection of the slides? Good afternoon. Let me welcome you to the first business session of the International Astronomical Union on the, 30, on the 30th General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union. It's been a great pleasure being here and we will do our business session and you, as, you see, as you will see, we have many items to, to carry on, so we might as well get started. Please, Piero, can you please get us started? Good afternoon, dear colleagues, and um, I will be the master ceremony of this first session of the General Assembly. And I'll start by showing the list of representatives of the national members that uh, have communicated their names. As you know, they, there are three sections of the uh, business, the general business matters, membership matters, and financial matters. And each uh, national member has the right to uh, appoint a person for each of these three. And for the two weeks, because not all of them are staying for the entire General Assembly. So this is the list that we receive for the first week. And um, I just want to show you the here that we have some of the representative of the members, new uh, national members that will be uh, presented for approval today. And they are in at this time here as observers because they are not yet officially part of the, of the union. I, just a recommendation for this representative, I hope they are all sitting in their reserve seat. This is just for convenience when we come to the point of voting that we can, the teller can easily count the votes. This is particularly important for the second session next week because uh, today there will only be one vote of very simple matter. Next week, there will be more complex uh, votes to take place. I also recommend that you do not walk away with a card with the name of your country because that will be used also next week. And uh, it will take uh, a considerable effort to print them again. Thank you very much for your understanding. Now, having said that, I just want to briefly uh, present the agenda because we need to approve it. And uh, so we will now go to the agenda for this first session. We had the welcome by the president. We have presented the list of national members. Then we have to adopt the agenda. And here I describe it. We will remind you about the voting rules, um, which as you will see is particularly important for the, for the votes that will take next week about resolutions. We will appoint the official tellers uh, that will count the vote. Uh, we will then present the new national members who have applied to become part of the union. We have an exceptionally large number of new members, which is very satisfactory for us. And I will briefly present them, and then we will have to vote for their admission. Then I will present you a report of the executive committee that summarized the main achievement or actions that have been taken during the past triennium. And we'll make some comments on that. One specific point there, as you will see, is the, the work that the executive committee has done uh, in terms of changing some part of the uh, union and to project the activity in the future. This will be presented separately as the changes of statutes, bylaws, and working rules, which we will have to approve by vote next week. So at this point, I will just present that, and I will, uh, as uh, the representatives know, 
yesterday we've been discussing that in detail and so I will summarize the discussion and the comments that have been emerging during the uh, yesterday preparatory meeting. We will then present, we'll have uh, the, the president-elect, Dean van Dyshok, will present in detail the new strategic plan that has been widely distributed and printed copies are available and if you don't have one now yeah, at the end of the, of the meeting you can take one. I, I suggest you do do so and so she will present in detail the uh, strategic plan that, has, that will be again is part of the one of the resolution that we will have to vote uh, in the next session next week. I, at that point, I will also ask the chair of the resolution committee, Bruce and the Green, to present the five resolutions that have been put forward for approval next week. Finally, I will show you, the, I will present the report of the special nominating committee that indicate the names of the new officers and the new vice president of the union. This is not become, they are not becoming officially mem uh, of officers and, and uh, because this has to be approved in, again next week during the sec second session. Finally, I will unveil what probably is well known and what are the candidates to host the, 20, the 32nd General Assembly in 2024. And, uh, we will then draw out of a box the, for the order of the four that will be used for the uh, presentation of the detailed proposal that takes place during a special meeting of the executive committee next Saturday. Uh, we, we didn't decide the order. This will be done by chance, uh, drawing out of the box and uh, then each of the presenter will know what order and when to come um, to make their presentation. This is the agenda for the uh, meeting of today. So at this point, I will ask uh, if we can approve it. Is there any vote in contrary to the adoption? Any abstention? So the agenda is approved. And now we can move back to the main presentation. As I said, the, f the first point after the adoption of the agenda was to a reminder of the voting rules. This is an extract of the statutes and by laws. In the said, voting at the General Assembly on issues of primarily scientific nature as determined by the executive committee is by individual members. Voting on all other matters is by national member. Each national member authorizes a representative to vote by, on its behalf. And this is the list of representatives that I just presented. On questions involving the budget of the union, the number of votes of each national member is one greater than the number of its category, referred to as in Article 10. National members with interim status, prospective status, or those who have not paid their dues for years preceding that of the General Assembly may not participate in the vote. Now, these votes about the budget will take place next week uh, at the second session. So today we don't have this um, vote by weighted voting, but we will have that during the next week. On questions concerning the administration of the union but not involving the budget, each national member has one vote under the same condition of payment of dues as before. Now, in addition to these normal rules, I want to highlight here other rules that um, comes, uh, becomes rather interesting for this particular uh, session, uh, of the next session. Uh, the decision of the General Assembly are taken by an absolute majority of the votes cast. However, a decision to change the statutes requires the approval of at least two-thirds of the old national member having the right to vote by virtue of Article 14a that you have seen just before. When there is an equi equi equal division of votes, the president determines the issue. And this is important because next session we will vote about 
um, a amendments, important amendments of the statutes and bylaws. 15A, the, to enable the widest possible participation of individual members, the executive committee may decide that voting on certain issues of primarily scientific nature, as determined by the executive committee, shall be open for electronic voting for not more than 31 days, counting from the close of the General Assembly at which the issue was raised. And then, con connected to this, is the executive committee shall give members not less than three months' notice before the opening of the General Assembly of the intention to open a certain issue to electronic voting after the General Assembly. Now, you have not been um, alerted or informed of the electronic vote, so we cannot apply this uh, article. However, after the publication of the uh, resolution that will have to be approved next week, uh, one of them, as the chair of the resolution committee will uh, describe more in detail when it comes to presenting the resolution, has uh, originated a, a number, a, a lively discussion, I would say, uh, to the point that, in a sense, the executive committee regrets now that they didn't think to put this resolution for electronic voting from the beginning. It would have been a, a good idea to do that, but unfortunately the, we didn't think that that was necessary. Now, we believe, and uh, we, there was Elmer Green will explain why, that nonetheless, without breaking the rules, a sort of wide electronic vote verification of one of these uh, voting resolution might be appropriate. So we will ask for your approval to go th with that after we discuss the specific case. I just wanted to make clear what are the rules that currently we have in place for electronic votes so that you will understand the mechanism that we propose to do uh, with this specific resolution. Now, we have been asking some of the uh, division presidents to act as official tellers and they kindly agree to do that. Uh, I'm sorry that Klaus, I misprint the, your last name, but I mean, we know who you are. Uh, so we, we thank very much about this and uh, I, um, I I ask for your approval of the appointment of the official terror. Is there any objection? Any abstention? So the official tellers are appointed and they will uh, count the votes when it comes to the votation. Now, here comes to the admission of new IU national members. This is the list of uh, the members that have been submitting a proposal to either to come back to the union or to become a new member. There are three members, the three countries that are coming back to the union. They were uh, terminated because they didn't pay uh, the dues for a uh, number of years. Now the situation in, in their country, in the activity in, uh, in, uh, in the astronomical research in their country has re been rejuvenated, renewed, and so they decided to resubmit a proposal to become again a member. These are Algeria, Jordan, and Morocco. All the others are new members, and I think we, are, we should be quite happy to see that this large number of countries decided to become member of the organization. Of course, some of them, as you can see, are entering as prospective member, which means that they do not pay dues. I'm indicating them as PO because in the uh, amendments of the statutes and bylaws that we are proposing, there is a proposal to change the name of prospective member into observer member. It is a subtle difference if you like, but the, the, the key point is that currently the prospective members has a, a, a number of years during which they can, they can stay as prospective and then they have to become a um, normal national member. Um, 
the executive committee uh, thought that this time limit was not reasonable because you have, it's always difficult to predict how long it would take in a country to develop the astronomical community to a point when uh, it becomes mature to uh, being admitted as a regular category one member. So uh, I think that this, because of this, I am indicating this as prospective observer. If the um, amendment of the status would be approved, then this will be observers in the union. In some cases, um, okay, we will discuss this one by one. And now uh, I will just show, uh, this is the list of the national member that I'm indicating here more in detail, Algeria. Uh, the adhering organization is the Centre de Recherche en Astronomie, Astrophysique et Geophysique. Um, I have been visiting the, uh, the center. They are really starting a new era in the Algerian um, astronomy. Of course, they have a long tradition because of the French connection, but this is now being renewed and uh, they are actually involved in an interesting project to um, monitor optically uh, gravitational waves events. And um, there is quite a number of young people, very enthusiastic, and so I think this is a very good game if, we, if they come back to the Union. Cyprus is very, is very young also as an organization, but uh, there is a very active group uh, founding a, a Cyprus space exploration organization, and um, they're quite enthusiastic about uh, collaborating with the, with the Union, and I think this is a very good signal for them also. Ghana uh, is uh, proposing to become, and again, very interesting, the, you know, this area of, uh, of the continent Africa continent has also been involved in the uh, regional node of astronomy for development. So this is a continuation of that and we are quite glad that they are proposing to become. And the, the adhering organization in this case is the Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute. Jordan is coming back and uh, Jordan, <coughs> the Royal Jordanian Geographic Center is also the host of, the, of one of the regional node of astronomy for development. So this is a logical um, path that they are taking to come back. They are also already, uh, they decided to <coughs> host the next um, um, Mid-East uh, African regional meeting of the IAU in two years time. And so uh, again, this show that uh, they are um, very active in getting back into, into Europe. Madagascar is, uh, is a, in a bit, bit of a surprise, but uh, when I participated in the uh, Ethiopian uh, ESIA, in the International School for Young Astronomers, I met a number of young astronomers who are currently doing their postdoc in uh, South Africa, but they are from Madagascar. And they show me what they are doing in their, in their island. And again, very enthusiastic. Of course, they are coming in as prospective observer, but this means that uh, by being connected to the union, this will help them to develop the community. And for us, it's a gain because it's uh, uh, particularly all these astronomers essentially are women. And I was very impressed by their determination in becoming scientists. Morocco, well, <laughs> Morocco uh, really should come back as category one. And I know that they try very hard to find a way to pay the, the dues. Um, they didn't succeed to, to make this proposal now, but uh, you, know, you, you all know very well uh, the fantastic achievement that they've done with their observation of uh, uh, Trappist system. And, and so um, again, uh, there is a young group, very active, and they will certainly try for the next General Assembly to change category and enter into category one. Mozambique uh, is another, is not a surprise because I mean, that is a, an effect of the SKA project that is highlighting the, the possibility of to participate in high level research in, the, in this region. And Slovenia, uh, we know very well they uh, have been hosting uh, symp IAU symposia 
they are quite active and it is a pleasure to, to have them member of the union. In Syria, uh, they are proposing to be prospective observer. Again, I met these astronomers in the, in, uh, in the Marin in Ethiopia and I was really, I will say, moved by the determination of these uh, colleagues that are working in extremely difficult situation at the moment. And I think that uh, by being a member of the union will certainly help them to maintain the enthusiasm in spite of the terrible condition in which this country is now running through. And the United Arab Emirates, in particular the Sarja Center of Astronomy and Space Sciences, uh, in, in, in a couple of years they set up a fantastic institute for astronomy research and space science. I visited that, very enthusiastic people um, connected to a university that is hosting uh, a large number of foreign students. And uh, so I think again, it would be uh, very important to have them among the, <coughs> the member of the union. So this completes the presentation of the new national member. And at this point, this uh, by statutes, the admission has to be voted by the national member representatives. So this is the time when the representative had to express their vote. So I propose that we uh, vote the admission globally and not one, one country by country. And uh, I'm asking if there is any objection any contrary vote to the admission of these 10 new members? Any abstention? So, by unanimous vote, these 10 members are now member of the union. And I think we should make an applause. Now comes to the report of the executive committee. So of course uh, we have limited time and I try to highlight the most important achievement that we uh, did or whatever I mean achievement I would say what we did during these three years with the executive committee. And so I listed here a number of points that I will elaborate one by one uh, with some more detail. So the first point was to improve the efficiency and transparency of the IU administration. Uh, in Honolulu, the, um, the way the accounting, the financial accounting was done was criticized. So that was a one point that we had to take into account and we tried to improve the efficiency and transparency. One key point of the executive committee during this period was to promote the junior astronomer, the young researcher, and also to be, uh, to take uh, action to improve the gender balance. The, gender, the overall gender balance of the union com in globally is of the level of 18% of women astronomer uh, on the total, and that we consider very low, and we, try to, to do action, to put in place actions that will change that. As you will see, some effect of these are visible and they are quite satisfactory. We continue to, to maintain a strong link between the executive and the IAU division uh, through the division president. Th this we consider very important. And of course, we have continued to improve and improve the support to symposia and regional meetings. We organize the nine meeting, nine scientific symposia every year and the regional meeting every three years. One very important activity was the preparation of the strategic plan, but that will be described more in detail by Evim in a moment. And uh, one important point was to offer a mutual forum for discussing future, future large facility. We had the general support of the Kavli Foundation to, to do that, and uh, I will describe that in a moment. Of course, we have the three main offices, OED, OEO, and OYA, and um, we have 
changes in the agreement uh, for almost all of this, and um, there have been improvement in the activity of the three offices. We made an effort which, uh, that we promised in Honolulu to improve the services offered to the Division Commission and to the astronomical community, and I will show you some example of that. And a new, a new activity that started uh, recently is to use astronomy for a better inclusion of everybody, independent, independently of, of the condition of uh, the people. And um, we have a specific activity during the GA called Inspiring Stars that uh, very explicitly investigate this type of um, of activity, which I consider very, very interesting and very nice. And of course, we have started preparing the celebration for the 100th year of the IU that officially is next year, but we start at this General Assembly. So let me now go quickly through this point. So for improving the efficiency and transparency of the IU administration, when we look at the, at the situation, we found that we Everything was done in a very traditional way, and today we have possibility of doing something better, which is more efficient, more, uh, that leave more time to the staff in the office to do more intelligent things than just filing documents. So we installed a completely electronic system of filing the documents, so all the documents are now either scanned or saved electronically, uh, each document, if it is about financial transaction, has a link to the, f uh, to the financial accounts. So when it comes to the external auditing, this is done very quickly because when the auditor wants to check a document, he just has to click on this and he see on the screen the relevant document. Of course, the paper copy is stored somewhere, but um, uh, this has been extremely uh, useful to improve the efficiency. We have now a new database of the, um, uh, of the let me say, go to the right one. This one is the a database of the national member, and this is used to control the dues payment. Before it was done one by one, and to, set, to give you an example, to send the letters asking uh, with invoice, it would take, uh, a long time because you have to check all of that. On. Now this is done automatically by the system. This is uh, updated continuously. So when you national member pay the due, this is uh, recorded here. Here you can see there are the arrears, the dues that are due for that year. This is the sum and this is what you pay. I'm sorry, I have to take the first <laughs> country <laughs> alphabetically, but I mean, we can move to others. If you don't like Argentina, you can go to Armenia, Australia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you can see here. You see, um, in some cases, like Austria. I mean, this is a very convenient too. They are very good. They pay everything. They, there is no arrears. When you want to send a uh, a reminder, you just click here, and the letter is automatically produced and sent. And so, by sending the invoices to the to the national member, now is done in a matter of a couple of hours for all of them. And everything is recorded, so the, the correspondence is recorded here, so if you want to know what happened, you can only go back without looking at paperwork. So this is very efficient, and in fact, it gives you a full control of the, um, of the payment. Uh, for example, if I want to know who paid in 2017, you see all these counter pay regularly, and here is the date of the payment, and this country are, didn't pay, so only a small number of countries didn't succeed to pay, and this is the total that have been accumulated. This year, we are still, uh, quite a number of countries didn't pay, but uh, we are confident that they will do it. And uh, in all the comments that we record here, it's, it's also, you know, some country used to pay at some date, and it's useless to remind them that they should pay. Uh, I, you know, since Teresa is here, Portugal is one of those. If you, if you ask them to pay, they say, hey, you know that we pay in December, so why do you send it? Now, this is recorded here, so we avoid embarrassment in sending letters that are useless. Anyway, this system is very good. It uh, is accessible, of course, by, to the office also remotely, so we can control that even if we, don't, uh, if we are not in the office. 
Okay, then uh, we, we change the accounting system. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend the French and, uh, colleagues here, but unfortunately we have to use a French accounting system because since the auditor is French, he needs to see the document in French, it, we, according to the French system. Nonetheless, we found that the old system was a bit complicated and we found a, a new one, more modern, still French, but cheaper and, and more efficient. So we, we moved to that. Uh, it, to me, it, was not, it is not completely satisfactory because um, it's not accessible remotely. So if the general secretary is not in the office, it cannot see the, the document. And that, uh, of course, he can read the paperwork, but it's not very convenient. So uh, what we did uh, was to use, a, uh, it's to use a more flexible system. We reproduce, in a sense, um, exactly what the French system does. So you have all the accounting, all the system here, but then you can do uh, something more smart and you can sort the payment by categories and code. So I, I know then by looking here how much I'm spending in a different group and I can sort that by category, very, very uh, condensed in the four main um, expenditure line that we have, science, education and outreach, executive committee and publication, administration and operation. And the important point for this is that I can include here the projection that I have in the, in the budget. And so I know at any point, I mean, this is a for, uh, refer to last year, I know in any point how much I've spent or what has been projected. So in this case, I spend less, in this case, I spend more because as you can see in red, but I have then the control of the system. And this is, is um, uh, I, we found very, very useful, be, particularly for the general secretary because he can, or she, can control that remotely. Of course, we have reintroduced the external audit system and uh, we had uh, several video conferences with the finance committee, which uh, explaining what we were doing. And uh, we have been distributing annually the finance report to the national members so that you should have received that and see what we have done. Now, coming to a more, I mean, this, I, I'm sorry I have spent a bit, maybe too much time describing uh, technical matters, but the key point there is by using this uh, system, which are much more um, sophisticated in the sense that what was done previously, uh, give much more time to the staff of the office, to Rosalia and to Madeleine. And so they can be involved in more satisfactory actions, like participating in some activity of the union and not just be, uh, you know, clerical work on, on the account. Now, that's coming to um, the promotion of junior astronomer and gender balance. What we did was to propose to introduce a new category, as you know, this uh, junior member category. And this is part of the um, amendments of the statutes and, and bylaws that we are proposing. The idea is to offer the possibility to uh, young researcher to, or researcher in any way that fi just finished the PhD to join the union. This was not the case before because, because we say that the individual member must be a professional astronomer. That means that you have to demonstrate that you are really, your activity for life is astronomy. And this is not certainly the case for a young person or a person that comes out directly from a PhD. So we have created this category, which is a temporary category, a maximum of six years, after which, after six years, one should understand if astronomy is in becoming really the, uh, the principal activity of the person or not, in which case this be, he, be, he or she become an individual member or otherwise she leaves the, or he leaves the union. So this is part of the amendments that will be approved next uh, week. However, before doing that, I have sounded the opinion of the national member with a questionnaire and the very large majority of the member were in favor. And so the executive committee decided that we could offer the possibility of junior member to enter the union already at this point. Of course, we have to do officially only after the approval of the statutes and bylaws, which will happen next, next month, uh, next week. 
Um, we have also, with a very good collaboration of the division president, I want to praise the, all the division president because they have been working very hard to shape this prize, we offer a PhD prize every year to the best thesis, the most uh, excellent thesis in the nine area of the division. So each division receive candidature for the best thesis, choose one or two ex equal. And, um, and these uh, young researcher, PhD students are invited as a prize to participate in the next General Assembly. So in this case, uh, we have and I wanted yesterday to show this, but I mean, some technical problem uh, was impeding me to do. I mean, the previous one, you already see, these are the Gruber fellows that we, we had in the triennium. Uh, these are the winner, the PhD winners of the 2016. And uh, the second round is here. And almost all of them are participating in, the, in this general assembly, a couple of them for personal reason couldn't come, but the other, all the other are here. They will present their research during the um, division day on Friday, and they will receive a certificate of this prize. And this, is, I think, is a good signal to, you know, to show that we are interested to what these young people do. And they, together with the junior uh, member, will um, participate in a, um, in, in a working group that um, we uh, want to form. Here is this junior work member working group that um, will meet for the first time Thursday. Uh, I have invited uh, all the junior member who registered for this uh, General Assembly, plus the winner of the PhD prize and the fellow and the Gruber fellows. And we will discuss with them the terms of reference of this working group, who, which will be reporting directly to the executive committee. And this is, will be the channel through which we will uh, uh, collect the desire and the, and the opinion of the young uh, researcher and see what action the union could do to improve their, their work. We monitor actively the gender balance and um, we are participating via the Women in Astronomy Working Group to a project funded by ICSU to analyze in general in science, not only in astronomy, the uh, situation of women. And uh, among other things, we renew the code of conduct. conduct. We made a specific anti-harassment statement that uh, actually had been also included in the, uh, in the regist registration of this uh, conference. So you, whoever registered to this conference agree to follow strictly the code of conduct that we have set up. And this anti-harassment uh, statement include the actions that uh, we will take in case something of that sort happened during a meeting of the IAU. Of course, we cannot consider things that happen outside what we organize, but certainly we are very keen to say that in our um, symposia and meetings, uh, the, the code of conduct is, uh, is followed strictly. We maintain a strong link between the executive and the IAU division through the division president. We uh, invited the division president and we supported their participation in one of the meetings of the executive committee, but we invited them to come to all the meetings. And I must say very generously, uh, all the division president used their funds to participate because they found that participation in this meeting is really very good. It makes the connection between the executive and the, and the, uh, and the, and the population of the union. Um, and so, in fact, we, we share the documents, most of the document uh, of the executive with the division president, and we assign specific activity, which already described, for example, the PhD prize. The PhD prize has been run directly by the division president. We 
continue to support this important regional meeting. Um, i show you here the statistics of the proposal. In 2017, we received 33 proposals. For this General Assembly, of course, there are more meetings, so we receive a larger number, 69 proposals between symposia and focus meeting. And for next year, we receive 30 proposals. So the level of competition remains high, which it means that we are um, attracting the interest of the, of the community to host a IAU symposium. An important change is uh, connected to the symposia is that we no longer the paper copy of the proceedings are compulsory uh, for the participation in symposia. Now we have the electronic only. If you want the paper copy, you can buy it uh, at a discounted price, but otherwise uh, it's not needed and this can keep the registration fee a bit lower. At least this is the intention. And um, we have completed a, a project that started uh, before I was taking over as General, Sem as General Secretary, and this is very, very interesting and very useful. It is all the proceeding, all the past proceedings, transaction and conferences organized by the IAU are now available online. This was a special project uh, signed with the Cambridge, and now this is true. Of course, there's still some hole for a very, very old um, proceedings because we didn't manage to to found uh, an existing copy. So if you explore that and you know that in your library this uh, missing proceeding exists, please let us know because we will include it. In some other cases, it was almost impossible to solve the copyright uh, agreement, not because there is bad will from the other side, because it's just difficult to find who helped in the help has to <laughs> sign the agreement. The contract that we have with Cambridge University Press for the uh, publication of the proceeding has been renewed. We have the collaboration with the Cambridge has been very good and so we are happy that this had been done. Now, we engage in the preparation of the strategic plan. If you remember, this was one of the resolution approved in Honolulu that gave uh, the task to the executive committee to uh, prepare this uh, strategic plan to be presented at this General Assembly. And this has been done. Um, we, in, in the first EC after the Honolulu in May 2016, uh, the executive appointed a dedicated worker group for the preparation. Uh, we decided there that the new strategic plan should encompass all the activity of the Union and not being concentrated only on astronomy for development as it was for the previous or the existing strategic plan. And um, we solicited inputs from OAO, OED, and all the division president, all the so-called stakeholders. And we sounded the opinion of the IU about the completeness of the strategic plan. We prepare a kind of table, ex expanded table of content. We distribute it to the community at large and we receive a number of interesting comments that have been implemented in the preparation of the plan. Finally, in February this year, the revised draft was distributed for comments and the final draft was approved here in Vienna in, in April plan is now ready to be, uh, I mean, is printed and it, it can be distributed. But in a moment, Evin will describe that in, in more detail. We organize with the, with the general support of the Kavli Foundation a, a discussion about the future of ground and space uh, facilities, in particular of the space-based ultraviolet optical infrared telescope. This was a very successful meeting in Leiden with all, mm, about 40 participants from all over the world, all expert and involved in this type of activity. The report is online and the discussion is continuing, very interestingly from what I hear in the focus meeting number 13, which is taking place here in Vienna. And I think the IU is an ideal position to offer this neutral forum for this discussion because we are not directly involved in any of these interesting projects, so we, we can stand back and offer the possibility of discussing freely, uh, not without any pressure from 
a funding agency that we are not. We sustain and expand the activity of the three IAU office, OED, OEO, and OYA. In, uh, in the case of OED, you remember the uh, agreement was revised and signed in Honolulu, and of course then we implemented the new agreement. For OEO and OEA, we revised the, the agreement and um, this improved certainly the activity and the visibility and the interface between the executive and the, and the two offices. Um, during this period, uh, and because of the revised agreement in the case of the Office of the Young Astronomers, who is organizing the International School for Young Astronomers, which is a very a key activity in terms of, um, of um, training and education, uh, we appointed the new deputy director, Itziar Arezaga, which I hope is in the audience, but I, she's certainly here because I saw her. And very recently, uh, uh, because of the decay of the, I mean, the, the come to an end, the previous director, um, um, come, uh, he, uh, we elected, I mean, the steering committee elected, uh, up, so elected, appointed a new deputy director, which is David Mota, and he will be here next week, and we will have uh, an interesting discussion and meeting for the organization of the school in the, in the following years. We increase the amount of money that the IU is um, adding to the one to the to the grant which is offered by the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. And by now, we have the possibility of organizing three easier school every two years. We have been this, we are discussing if it is possible to organize four or two school every year. This is a bit. Uh, stress for the director, so we have to discuss with them if this is possible. But if it is, we can increase the amount of money that we dedicate to this activity and have this, because we consider this really a, a top uh, activity in education. Now, I, we improve the services for the division commission. In particular, we migrate all the existing uh, web pages of the division to a, a same style web page, which means that when a, a division president change, the page stay there and the content can be changed, but the, the page is, is there. This is the, just an example of the standard page that we have created. And um, uh, Madeleine has been uh, working actively on this, uh, particularly convincing <laughs> the people to adhere to this new style and the same is coming is becoming is in progress for commission it's a bit more difficult but um, we will come to the point where everything is in the same place now the other activity that took place which um, i think is uh, very interesting for you is that we have transformed the members static database i mean we have a database that has a profile for each of you and that is stored in, uh, in our in ESO, in a database, but uh, it is accessible also to you, but one by one. We considered that that was not very, very useful, and so we transformed that in a, uh, we first of all, we, we modify the, um, the input form for submitting a new individual member, and among the fields that you have to fill now, uh, there are a large number of keywords taken from uh, you know, a astrophysical journal or astronomy and astrophysics keywords, and which describes more in detail uh, the, your interest and your activity. This is now coded because there are keywords, and so these keywords can be used to select people from the database. This is now, uh, uh, it is true for the, um, for the new members because they, uh, they've been forced to fill in the, the keyword, but it's not yet true for the, for the other members because I have distributed a mail asking everybody to fill in 
these keywords in their profile. It's an operation that takes a couple of minutes. And however, of the more than 9,000 active member of the union, only 1,000 so far responded. But I think that if you see the capability of the system, which is available on the web, uh, you can see here that uh, you have the individual uh, characteristic. Of course, I'm not publishing any sensitive data like gender and uh, year of birth, but you have the, the year when you join the, um, the union and you have the year when you have your PhD. This part here, it's limited to the new member because they have filled in all the things. So the year joined, of course, is 2018. In the other case, it will be the year that you have joined. This is the division to which you uh, belong. And um, I, if I go to the research keyword, then you have all these different area of astronomy from going from general to physical data, instrumentation, astronomical database, et cetera, et cetera. And here are the keyword that you can click to fix it. And all these are queryable, so you can query, you can go back to the, to the contact and you say, I want to know, uh, for example, uh, who, how many people are in division uh, A and in division E. And you do a find and you find out of the 1,244 new member, only eight people are uh, in division, both in division A and division E. So this can be a very useful tool. You can do the same thing uh, using the, the, the keyword for the research. So particularly, for example, for the director of the ESIA school, if they want to select people that have specific interest and expertise in some area, this can be done. And you can see here there is a box where it indicates the interest or availability of the person to collaborate either with OED, OEO, on the uh, ECS school. I will have to ask the permission of the, all the members to put this online before I offer this officially, but I think this is a very, in, very useful tool, very useful tool and I hope that people understand that and fill in the keyword properly so that this uh, can be applied to all the population of the, of the union. There is one point that I want to highlight here without going into discussion, but just to highlight a point. As I told you, we are very keen to promote gender balance. On the other end, people say that gender should not be made public. So in fact, you don't see it, although internally the database we have that data and we use it only for statistical purposes. So to know how, how many uh, uh, member are female or men. Some division president said that sometime when they have to select somebody giving a talk or you know, making, with everything being equal, they would like, for example, to choose a women astronomer. But how do you do it if you don't know <laughs> the gender? So this is a very subtle thing that I leave to your consideration. At the moment, as I said, this is not made public, uh, but consider the fact that if you don't know that, uh, you cannot use in a positive way. So you have to trade uh, the two things. It's a catch-22 situation that I don't want to go in. Anyway. Let's continue with this. I said to you uh, there is this new activity of uh, astronomy for inclusion. We use astronomy to improve the inclusion of everybody, sharing not only the knowledge but also the active research. And if you visit this uh, interactive exhibition that will travel now in several countries, already I know from Rosario that there have been several uh, people, of several representatives asking how they can move this to their country. This is very uh, encouraging, means that uh, this is a very interesting activity. So I invite you to visit the, this uh, exhibition that um, will have a special day tomorrow. And of course, we started the preparation for the celebration next year. Uh, we have organized an organizing committee has been appointed. We have a 
project coordinator that is um, in working in Leiden next to the, uh, to the president elect, now becoming president, and with a, with a share in cost by the Leiden University, which is much, very much appreciated. Um, there is an exhibition that you have visited, uh, I'm sure, and it has been open yesterday, above and beyond. The ceremony, the opening ceremony of the celebration will be next year in the Académie des Sciences in Brussels in April. And we decided that the next uh, executive committee, number 104, will be in Rome because the first assembly of the Union in 1922 was in Rome. So we'll have a special day at the Academia dei Lincei, which is the most famous uh, academy in Italy. And then we will continue with a business meeting of the UDC uh, in Rome. And we have got also an invitation of a second uh, national member that insists on the same territory, which is the Vatican State. So we'll share the meeting between Rome and Vatican, except actually Castel Gandolfo, which is a, a very nice site. And um, there is a specific web page for this uh, activity, which has been recently uh, put forward, and I invite you to, to visit it. And we actually, this picture is new. <laughs> it was not there yesterday, so that's very nice. It means that people work on the, and here you can see all the projects that have been planned and, uh, and, and you can have a, an idea of what is going on in preparation of this uh, very important celebration next year. Okay, now we come to the change of status bylaws and working rules. The main point is the introduction of the junior member category, the introduction of the honorary members category, which was coming up together with the idea of junior member. We, in the, in the proposal that we present, we want to change the time limit, to eliminate the time limit of the, uh, of an interim or prospective, and the prospective will become observer at this point. And finally, there is a tiny um, modification of the last uh, article of the status that describe what will happen when we dissolve, if ever, the union. And this was, um, was done because in this way we could obtain, which we obtain, the so-called charity equivalent status, which is very important for if we want to receive donations from the US. In fact, is what happened, and that is because we obtained this. Uh, now, I, I want to, yesterday we presented these um, amendments to the, uh, to the representative of the national member, of course, as by statute, these was, were distributed in time for receiving comments. I received none, but yesterday, I mean, at that time, I received none, but yesterday, uh, there was a suggestion to make a small change. And the change refer, refers to the uh, honorary members. I show you now the, uh, the, uh, the existing text, the proposed text, So this is the document that you should have received. It describes the, in, in the first page what is the, the purpose and scope of these uh, amendments. And then one by one you see the, the current text and the amended text. Uh, this is just introducing the honorary member. And I, I already described what a junior member is, so I don't waste time now to do it again. But when it comes to honorary member, um, you would see that, um, let me check this. Here it comes. It says, no more than one honorary member candidate per national member can be presented every triennium. Now, the ob not objection, but the comment that w came up yesterday is that the, in some cases uh, this can be, uh, can be considered a limitation because of the size of the community. And so the proposal was to um, link the number of honorary members 
to be presented to link that to the category. So I have prepared a second version of, of this that essentially changed this article saying that from, now I, I open it for you and so you understand what is Okay, so this is all the same when it comes to the point it says here, so this is the alternative text, the maximum number of honorary members candidate per triennium is one for national member in categories one to four, two for national member in categories five to seven, and three for national member in category eight to 12. Um, so you have these two alternatives. Now the votation on the statutes amendments will happen next week. So now you have time to consider the two possibilities and when it comes next week, we will vote on one or the other alternative. Uh, I didn't want to expand more than this. I mean, I think that this is, I hope it collects the comment, uh, properly the comment that I get yesterday about this point, um, and um, you have time now to think what you would like. You can either vote the original text, which is one honorary member per national member per GA, or something which is linked to these three bands of categories. Now here we come to the presentation of the strategic plan and at this point I'll ask Evin to come to stage and to present. Good, good afternoon uh, everybody. We are happy here to uh, present sort of this uh, booklets here in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, or so. Uh, and I'm here together with Deborah. Uh, both of us have been very actively involved in the writing of this, uh, this plan. So you may wonder why a new strategic plan? Um, as you just heard, the union will celebrate its 100th anniversary in uh, next year. But it's actually that over most of that period, those 100 years, uh, the union actually didn't have a detailed strategic plan. Of course, it had the strategy in mind, but I don't think it was written down so, <laughs> so clearly. Um, all of that changed in uh, 2000, around 2011 as an outcome of the uh, International Year for Astronomy, uh, because as an outcome of that uh, fantastic uh, IYA 2009 activities, the union actually inherited several of those activities and turned them into the various new offices that we have now, most notably the Office of Astronomy for Development. And at that time, in order to get the OAD approved by the, uh, by the Union, it was important to write a strategic plan for the OAD and to get that uh, written up and then indeed improved. Um, so the a strategic plan under which we are operating at this very moment is actually that beautiful booklet that you see over there with the famous wheel uh, indicated there with astronomy in the center and then all the other parts that we link with technology and skills, science and research in different fields and of course also culture and society. Um, now in 2015 in Honolulu, uh, it was realized that to um, make sure that the OED has a longer term future and can plan for a longer term future by this General Assembly, we needed to have a plan actually for the next decade uh, as to what is going to happen with the OED. But then we realized actually as the uh, executive committee that this was a very good moment to think about more than just the OED because we also uh, started the OAO, the Office of Astronomy Outreach, uh, the Office for Young Astronomers, these were also uh, established just in the last uh, uh, several years 
And so it was important that we actually thought more broadly about this and, and see what is the UNIM actually doing, what is its plans, does it all fit together, uh, etc. So including all of these new activities. So uh, the first thing that we actually discussed, um, so, so actually at the uh, executive committee meeting in Mexico in 2016, a working group was appointed, especially Deborah, myself, René Krankotjevech, and Piero Benvenuti. Um, and we started to, to draft and think and talk with many of the uh, stakeholders about what this new strategic plan should be. The first thing was, what is the IEO mission actually? Now the mission as it is written, was written until recently on the web pages was the mission of the IEO is to promote and safeguard astronomy in all its aspects through international cooperation. And that covers very nicely uh, what we are doing in, in the union. But to, to highlight sort of what we are actually doing, <laughs> that it is more than just discussing research, um, we decided to add in, in sort of parentheses uh, basically what all these aspects are, research, communication, education, and development. And so there you see already the, the several aspects that, uh, uh, that we now have in there. So this working group got to work. Uh, we uh, solicited input from the uh, stakeholders, especially OED, OEO, ESIA, division presidents, executive committee. Uh, we asked them all to, to send us also input. We had uh, Skype meetings with them, face-to-face uh, -face meetings wherever possible. Uh, we had as the working group a face-to-face -face meeting in Leiden. Uh, we started writing, <laughs> which was not inconsiderable. Um, we decided at that time, once we had a, a, an outline, to send that to the entire membership in sort of an abbreviated form for you to comment on. Is this the direction that you want the union to, to, to go? Uh, and we are very pleased by the responses that we got. So, uh, several members uh, took the time to, to write very uh, consider, uh, considerate uh, comments on it that uh, we took into account in the, um, then in the subsequent versions. The main suggestion that came out actually of that consultation was one uh, actually largely from uh, our Assistant General Secretary, uh, Teresa, who suggested that we should formalize the educational aspects more than uh, we are doing now. Not the educational aspects of training astronomers at uh, sort of university levels, but more the educational aspects of, tra of training at, uh, uh, at school level. So then we uh, uh, wrote a full draft. Uh, we got again comments now on the full draft from the OED, from the executive committee's di division presidents. We sent a full draft to the national members. Um, and then um, no comments were received from the national members. So we, we took that as a good sign. We hope that this is indeed the case when you start to vote. Um, and uh, we then got the approval from the executive uh, committee. Then we posted it to the entire world at the IE website in May. Uh, and then we had it uh, actually typeset and print, uh, which was done very nicely, uh, that you now see over here. And so this is now what is part of resolution A1 that you will get to vote on in, uh, uh, in the second uh, business uh, session. Of those of you who want comments, so here it is. Uh, we brought copies, actually, you can get them at the IEU stand, but we have a whole pile over here, so by the end uh, of the meeting, if you want to take a copy along, please do so, because it always helps, especially in this case, to have a paper copy in hand. Okay, so what are we actually doing? Um, so we actually have these five goals here in uh, green that you see over here. They go through the various aspects of the union. The union aspects of the union are shown here in this, uh, this diagram. And let me just walk you through the first one, uh, which is more the traditional part of the IAU that we're all familiar with, which is basically the advancement of astronomy. We stimulate that through meetings, we coordinate various professional tasks, and we recognize excellence in astronomy through prizes, like we've just seen yesterday through the Gruber Prize and uh, there is the Gruber Prize lectures. But to highlight already one sort of goal that we have for the next decade is to to diversify the portfolio of prizes further. We started already with that with the PhD prizes, uh, but we want to do that uh, even further. Um, additional tasks and coordinations. Um, of course, we are doing, especially Division A is very active in this. Astronomy standards, uh, the naming of astronomical objects, of course, and service features is an important aspect of the union. The dark and quiet sky protection, uh, quite a bit of activity there. 
The global coordination on large facilities, you heard already about uh, at the start that we had is that uh, the working group that is now directly under the executive committee, the first workshop that we had on that uh, um, in Leiden, and uh, that is through also the meetings that we are having here and focus meeting 13, uh, that's certainly going to continue. Women in astronomy have already been part of uh, our activities, uh, but certainly uh, it's again a working group directly under the EC uh, is going to uh, receive further attention, especially also with diversity and inclusiveness directly linked to that. And then the junior member has been described already uh, in detail. Okay, so that's much more, so I will leave it then to uh, Deborah to give out the second part. Of that. <laughs> Thanks, Sabine. Um, so we started in 1919 getting astronomers together to have meetings and so as you've just been hearing, hearing from Avine and for those of you who have walked through the 100 year display, you'll see that just in the last decade we've really expanded as you've been hearing about. So for those of you who are not on, up on all the acronyms or want to know a little more about the different offices, we have three additional offices formally right now to carry out these additional activities and a fourth one that's proposed. So the OYA is the Office for Young Astronomers. The OAD uh, is the Office of Astronomy for Development. The OAO is the Office for Astronomy Outreach. And what we're proposing for a vote next week is the Office of Astronomy for Education. So these all have different responsibilities. Sometimes they overlap. The Office for Young Astronomers is focused on the training of our next generation of astronomers. So in particular, they help organize the International School for Young Astronomers, the ISIA. This is done in uh, coordination with the Division C president who's on the steering committee. The Office of Astronomy for Development is about using the science and technology that come naturally in doing astronomy, but to apply them to uh, economic benefits in developing countries and now expanding into other countries as well and also the cultural links between astronomy and various societies. So this is to help reach the UN Sustainable uh, Development Goals, to help impact um, the science and technology development in different countries through the natural conduit of astronomy. The Office for Astronomy Outreach is all about astronomy communication with the public, so providing access to astronomical materials, and um, engaging with the public in different ways. There's a, a national outreach contact uh, list that's a network as well as a listing of amateur groups in each country. The proposed Office of Astronomy for, for Education, as Avine mentioned, will be focused on training teachers at uh, elementary through high school level. So using astronomy as a stimulus for STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and helping to develop um, science in different countries by starting with astronomy. So we have mandates in the new strategic plan that tie all these offices together. Um, we have a liaison on the executive committee with each of the offices. This allows us to help oversee the strategic plans for each of the offices and also allows for coordination when there are overlapping activities. And in addition, we make sure that their activities tie in with our overall strategic plan. Of course, we interact with many other fields in our research, and as you heard yesterday, we're part of the International Council for Science. In, in working through the Office of Astronomy for Development, we tie into all the uh, UN Strategic Development Goals, and so these are represented by the wheel that was on the original uh, strategic plan from the past decade. Still ongoing today in trying to interact with many different fields. So we have five main goals, as uh, Dean highlighted in the book, uh, five main goals that tie to these offices and to the uh, different uh, divisions. So goal one is all about astronomy, communication, and coordination among astronomers. So this is the professional astronomy conduit through the executive committee, which in case you're not fully aware of how this goes, we've got the president, the president-elect, the general secretary, the assistant general secretary, who then becomes the general secretary, uh, the past president as an advisor, and six vice presidents. So that's the executive committee. We have, of course, nine divisions, currently 35 commissions, and 55 working groups. And the working groups can come and go from one triennium to the next because they're designed to be uh, working on specific goals 
and some of them, as Avine mentioned, are part of the, uh, at, at the executive level, or they're fundamental, such as uh, standards committees that are ongoing working groups. Goal two is about promoting the inclusive advancement of our next generation of astronomers. So that's something we're all trying to do, of course, but particularly through the Office for Young Astronomers and the International School for Young Astronomers, we help um, foster that. Goal three is tying in astronomy to development, so that's through the OAD. Goal four is about engaging with the public, so that's all about the communication through the OAO. And goal five will be, again, stimulating the use of astronomy for teaching at the primary and secondary level, so what we call in the U.S. the K-12 level, before you get to, to university. We have for each goal a number of actions that have been formulated. They're detailed uh, for each office, um, color-coded in the strategic plan. And so we have specific goals for each of the main offices and actions. Some of them are being discussed this week at focus meetings or at division days, so make sure that you find the ones of most interest to you. We will be issuing a call for proposals for the new Office of Astronomy for Education, and we will try to meet the following objectives in issuing this call. To establish a network of national astronomy education coordinators, so this will be like the, the national outreach contacts, uh, but this is specifically directed towards education, um, and this will be used to help uh, analyze the use of astronomy in teaching in the IAU countries, and to identify identify materials that are appropriate, and astronomy literacy guidelines to help develop a standard syllabus in the different countries. This would be by uh, communicating with the educational ministries and curriculum experts in each country. Also to encourage the standards that the different teachers would be using as they're trying to develop astronomy in their um, primary and, and secondary school education. And we'd also like to have uh, International School for Astronomy Education. This is similar to the National Astronomy Science um, Education uh, training that goes on now through a working group. But again, we're elevating it to the executive committee level because we think it's so important that we want to standardize the process. So this will be directed towards the teachers. And finally, to build a database of volunteers from among the IAU members who can help contribute to teacher training. So the success of our strategic plan depends on all of you being involved. It's not the executive committee, it's not the divisions, commissions, and working groups alone, it's all of us working together. So to successfully execute what we're trying to do, you've got to be involved. So make sure that you're involved in whatever activities interest you most, whether it's at the working group level, commissions, divisions, or offices, let us know that you want to be involved and encourage your colleagues to join the IAU and particularly encourage early career astronomers and thanks to the many, many thousands of you who have already been engaged. Thank you. Okay, after this uh, very interesting presentation of the resolution of the strategic plan, now we come to the uh, presentation by the chair of the resolution committee, Bruce and Green, of the resolutions. He will give a brief description of the resolution. I remind you that the resolutions are online on our uh, website. Uh, you just go there in one of the recent announcements and the text of the resolution are there in case you have not seen them yet. And now I go to the presentation. So these are the resolutions which you will find online in full form, um, paraphrased here. Uh, as you know, there'll be a vote on these next Thursday, a week from Thursday, with the um, fourth one, B4, which is the fifth of these five resolutions, uh, open for a, a more general vote later. So resolution A1 concerns the strategic plan that you just heard, and I'll, I'll read through this. Considering that the 29th General Assembly 
resolved to continue the strategic plan for astronomy for the developing world until the 31st General Assembly. The Executive Committee in 2016 formed a working group to prepare an extended plan called the IAU Strategic Plan 2020 to 2030 for the 30th General Assembly, encompassing all activities of the IAU. That this working group in 2017 widely solicited comments on a draft plan from the IAU and national members. And the EC in April 2018 approved the final draft and published it on the IAU web pages, resolves that the executive committee should implement the IAU strategic plan 2020 to 2030 and review its progress at general assemblies in 2024 and 2027. And the new strategic plan 2030 to 2040 should be prepared for presentation to the GA in 2030. Okay, second, resolution B1. Difference between resolutions A and B, the A type resolutions have budgetary considerations. This is from Commission A2 on terrestrial reference systems. Noting the essential role of reference frames for precise positioning of the Earth and its rotation, such as GPS, search and rescue, construction. The adoption of previous resolutions by IAU 2000, IUGG, that's the International Union for Geodesy and Geophysics, on the verocentric and geocentric celestial reference systems without Earth rotation, verocentric is the center of the solar system, geocentric is the center of the Earth. The adoption of previous resolutions on the geocentric terrestrial reference system co-rotating with the Earth and by the IUGG 2007 on the international terrestrial reference system as the specific GTRS maintained internationally in agreement with the International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service. Also noting the adoption in 2015 by the United Nations of a resolution on a global geodetic reference frame for sustainable development, recommends that the International Terrestrial Reference System be adopted and promoted by the IAU as the preferred geocentric terrestrial reference system. What this is saying essentially is that we um, join the IUGG, which has already approved this, as the preferred terrestrial reference system. Resolution B2, this comes from a working group in Division A on celestial reference frames. So that was an Earth rotation-based system, and now this is a celestial um, stellar system. Noting that the 23rd GA resolved to adopt the International Celestial Reference System. The 27th GA resolved that the realization of the ICRS be the second realization of the International Celestial Reference Frame, ICRF2, which has some 300 quasars in it and that VLBI programs continue to improve on this, recognizing that continued observations have doubled the volume of VLBI data and improved the data quality. A working group was formed in 2012 to generate an ICRF3 by the 30th General Assembly, and this has been done. Resolved that the realization of the ICRS shall now be ICRF3, and that the VLBI observations should continue, especially in the southern hemisphere, and reference frames at other wavelengths should align for the ICRF3. Resolution B3, from an interdivision working group, divisions B and E, on the preservation of historic data. Noting that historical observations of changes in the sun, stars, and other objects 
have irreplaceable value for time domain astronomy, and that despite a 24th GA resolution to transfer historical observations to digital media, most archives have not done this. Fearing that analog and early digital observations are decaying and at risk of loss, and that important data sets were acquired in projects that no longer have resources or plans to preserve them, recommends that a concentrated effort be made to ensure the preservation, digitization, and scientific exploration of all of astronomy's historical data, analog and digital, and associated records. And finally, B4 from the Executive Committee on renaming the Hubble Law. Considering that the apparent recession of galaxies is a founding pillar of modern cosmology, that the Belgian astronomer George Lemaitre in 1927 published a paper entitled, and here I translate to English, a homogeneous universe of constant mass and increasing radius, reflecting the radial velocities of extragalactic nebulae, in which he rediscovered Friedman's dynamic solution to Einstein's general relativity equations that describes an expanding universe and used published data on velocities and distances to derive the rate of expansion. Considering also that his article in the Annals of the Scientific Society of Brussels was in French and largely overlooked, that George Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble met at the third IAU General Assembly in Leiden in 1928 and exchanged views, that Hubble published and this is the title of his paper, A Relation Between Distance and Radial Velocity Among Extragalactic Nebula in 1929, and ultimately included significant new velocity data in a 1931 publication with Humison. Considering also that Lemaitre was invited in 1931 to publish an English translation of his 1927 paper in monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, in which he deliberately omitted his derivation of the expansion rate, presumably because he considered his derivation not interesting anymore after the publication of Hubble's new data. Continued. Desiring to pay tribute to both George Lemaitre and Edwin Hubble for their fundamental contributions to modern cosmology, to honor the intellectual integrity and modesty of George Lemaitre that made him value more the progress of science rather than his own visibility. To highlight the role of IAU General Assemblies in fostering exchanges of views and in international discussions, and to inform future scientific discourses with historical facts. Resolves to recommend that from now on, the expansion of the universe be referred to as the hubble lemaitre law. We've gotten several comments with various points of view on this. Of course, we all know that there, was a, there were precedents. We all know that others um, derived velocities early on. We all know that others discovered a velocity distance or velocity brightness relationship going back to the early 1920s and wondered about the particular role of Lemaitre. And I think a good illustration of what was happening at that time comes from this quotation in a paper by De Sitter, 1930. If you recall the chronology before 1929, Hubble published his paper in 1931 Lemaitre was invited to write, and he did publish a translation in monthly notices. And De Sitter in 1930s in a paper entitled On the Magnitudes, Diameters, and Distances of the Extragalactic Nebula and Their Apparent Radial Velocities. That was in BAN. He starts by saying, 
Lately, several radio velocities of extragalactic nebula have been published, all of which are large and positive. This makes the question of the distance of these objects of particular importance. And I note that he gives no references for any of these velocities or any of these other uh, discussions or to Hubble's paper. And he goes through a meticulous discussion of distances. Very well done. 14 pages. And you know De Sitter had favored a, a static universe. And at the end he states this. It thus appears that a static solution of Einstein's field equations cannot represent the observed facts. A non-static solution, solution is contained in a paper by Dr. G. Lemaitre, and he actually gives a reference to that paper, published in 1927, which had failed to attract my notice, but to which my attention was called by Professor Eddington only a few weeks ago. Lemaitre finds a solution in which the radius of curvature increases with time. And then De Sitter goes on to calculate the mass of the universe in two or, two or three more lines. And his last statement is, I hope to return to the discussion of this ingenious solution in a separate communication. So these are the resolutions that are presented for your consideration. And if you, uh, I do encourage you to uh, communicate with me during the course of this week. You can find me or the resolutions committee. We are listed on the IEU website. And we'll have some time for discussion also a week from Thursday at the final business meeting. And in particular, we'll have some time uh, to discuss this one. Thank you. Okay, just a small comment about the presentation or resolution that uh, Bruce made very clearly, very neatly. It's obvious that this uh, resolution before has solicited a number of comments and uh, discussion, very interesting discussion, I must say, very lively. And so I encourage you to communicate to Bruce during these days your comments. I think that independently of the result of the uh, vote on this resolution, this will give to the union a large visibility because the subject is not technical, it's understandable by common people, and it will attract the attention. So people will know about the existence of the IAU uh, beyond the usual thing that they say the IAU is the organization that give name to the stars. Now, I think that the way we will treat this matter, which is a delicate matter, will give us the good visibility if we do it properly. So, as you've seen, as I uh, indicated initially, um, in retrospect, we should have proposed this resolution to be voted electronically by the entire community. We failed to do that, and now we are in a situation that we cannot retrospectively apply that rule. But then we can do something else, which is to take a vote here, collect all the comments that, are, uh, that you will provide, and then open for an electronic vote verification of the vote, opening uh, in addition to the current vote, uh, electronic sounding of the opinion of the entire community. This will give us, I think, a better feeling of the result, and we will accept the result of the global vote, and it will show to the society that the union is very serious to tackle even delicate questions in a proper way without fearing any criticism. I mean, we have to learn from the Prague uh, famous case. Uh, the most uh, valid criticism there was that the decision was, was taken by a small group of people in, in Prague. 
uh, we don't want to go to that situation. So that is uh, our proposal that was discussed by the executive committee um, on Sunday. And so please look, read carefully to this um, uh, text of the resolution, communicate your comments to, to Bruce, and then uh, we will uh, take the vote, we'll collect and summarize the discussion that uh, will be take place uh, next week. And we, after summarizing this, we will offer the community the opportunity to vote and verify by that the decision. Okay, now we're coming to a very interesting point, which is the report of the special nominating committee, which will show you the proposed member of the executive committee for the next triennium. So I'll start with the president, which already we know. So the president-elect will become president, a dean and bishop. The president-elect is Deborah M. Green. I think that you can take it. <laughs> the general secretary that follows me, that you know, is Maria Teresa Lago. And the new Assistant General Secretary is Jan Robson from the UK. He, unfortunately for previous uh, commitments, he cannot be here this week, but he will join us next week. And so we will have opportunity to discuss with him the next period. Now we come to the uh, rest of the Executive Committee, the six uh, uh, Vice Presidents. So there are those who remain for the second term, Ajit Kambavi, the uh, Boris Shustov. And now if you should note, it, note that Deborah was vice president for the first term. So in principle, she was there staying for a second term. But having been appointed as president elect, she left a hole in the, in the group and we didn't want to break the three, three by three alternation because I think this is a very good rule. So we ask one of the division president to become vice president just for a triennium, just for three years. And uh, we thank John Earnshaw, the president of division C that he accepted to stand and to sit in the executive committee just for one term. So I think he also deserved <laughs> it. The three new vice presidents that have been appointed by the special nominating committee are Laura Ferrarese from Canada for the first term. <laughs> Laura will also arrive next week because of previous commitment. Daniela Lazzaro from Brazil. <laughs> she is also joining us next week. And finally, Yunichi Watanabe, who instead he's here and we should. <laughs> the group is completed by two advisors who are the past president, Norio Kaifu. Norio. I mean, uh, everything has to go perfect, but sometimes there is some holes in the, in the but okay, I, I can uh, correct that in real time, okay? Of course, the advisor is Sylvia, and the other advisor is me, okay? <laughs> I apologize for this uh, mishap, but uh, too many things. No, I think, look, um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a Freudian slip. Norio has been a, has been a great president and he, he really wanted to be here with us. That's why I put it in, in the slide. <laughs> it, is, it was in my mind. 
And he, uh, because of uh, his conditions, he finally had to decide not to come. But he really wanted to be here. And so I think uh, that is the reason why I made this mistake. <laughs> now, let me complete the thing because we are not finished yet. There is some other interesting point. So now we come to the point of unveiling the bids for hosting the next general, not the next, the next in 2024 General Assembly. And these are the four bidder, Montreal for Canada, Rome, Italy, Puebla, Mexico, Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> now, the, you have to know uh, that we received this uh, last year seven letter of intent to host the 2024 General Assembly. At that point, this was an exceptionally high number of letter intent. And at that point, the executive committee thought that it was unreasonable to ask all the seven to make a full proposal. We know that preparing a full proposal for hosting the General Assembly is a lot of work. It's also a lot of investment in terms of not only work but money. And so considering that only one would be finally chosen, we decided that we should make a down selection of the seven. So we asked the seven to complete the letter of intent with more detail that would allow us to uh, down select. And uh, this was done successfully, very quickly by all participants. And uh, out of the seven, we choose these four and they have prepared now and submitted a full-blown proposals. This will be presented by them, by their representative, next Saturday in a second session of the executive committee meeting. You can notice here that uh, there are some conflict of interest for three proposals with a member of the executive committee starting with Rome and me, uh, I am obviously a conflict of nationality with the proposal. And the same is true for Sylvia for Mexico and, uh, and Rene for Cape Town. So we ask to be excluded by the evaluation committee and we will not participate in that. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Frankly, my personally, I'm very happy not to be there because uh, that is a much responsibility. These proposals are very, very good. All of them are very good. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I mean, I'm, uh, it really is a big responsibility to choose. But this will happen Saturday. Now, we have to uh, announce the order by which this proposal will be uh, listen and since we want to be absolutely impartial I think that we should draw the order now so I'll ask Madeleine to come up with a little purse which contains four piece of paper with the four names and I am asking a young volunteer from the floor a volunteer I mean one of the of the formal volunteer that are must be here some of one those with, ah, okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> so now we make this little game. Uh, you take one by one out of these without looking. So the first one, you can read it, what is written. <laughs> Rome, Italy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Rome. The, so Ro the team Rome goes first at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock Saturday, they will have to show up and present their proposal. Puebla, Mexico. Okay. 
And this will be 10 o'clock Mexico. 10 o'clock, the group of Mexico should come and prepare the, and present their proposal. Montreal, Canada would be the third at 11. 11 o'clock. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I can take out the fourth because it's <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Cape Town, South Africa. Cape, Cape Town at uh, noon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the room will be 283 on, on this floor for those that are present for the presentation, that they will be informed for, uh, formally of the time. Okay, thank you very much. You. Now, an announcement. Yesterday, we discussed with the national member the fact that they have to elect, to propose and to vote for the composition of three committees the Finance Committee, the Membership Committee, and the Special Nominating Committee. So Madeleine has opened, or will open tonight, the electronic vote. Uh, the representative that have announced their uh, name for the first week for the, these committees will receive an email with instruction on how to vote and with the terms of the vote. It, during the second preparatory meeting next week, we will analyze the result and we will eventually correct the result according to the rules that are present in the statutes and bylaws. And these will then be presented this following day during the second session of the business assembly. And the second session is on August 30th from 4.15 to 18.30. So this concludes the first session with a bit of advance in time, but not much. So thank you very much for your assistance, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>